Welcome to Thursday Night Knives. I'm your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco, and tonight it's all about Emerson's. Uh, tonight we're going to be speaking, uh, we're going to be talking Emerson's with our good friend Ad Edwin. You know him as Caloper on Instagram or Calo Blades on YouTube. He's got the most amazing Emerson collection and quite uh, an extensive knowledge on Emerson Knives, and as you know, I am a huge fan. Uh, so we will be getting to that in a moment. I, I want everyone uh, who is here and willing to chat and put up a comment to let me know what you were carrying today. This is the official pocket check. What were you carrying today? What are you carrying? Do you change your carry when you get home from work? Or, or you know, do you change your carry when you come in from the yard after mowing the grass or whatever it is? Or are you a one blade a day kind of guy and gal? Blade Ogre, good to see you, sir. I'm assuming you're a sir as you're an ogre. Mike, hello, sir. Hello. Uh, pocket check, please let me know. Caleb, good to see you. I hope you're enjoying that Terzawola package, spirited whiskey. Always good to have you. I hope you're enjoying that new mayo. I don't know if you have one. I'm just assuming. Uh, love, <laughs> impressive collection, sir. Uh, so tonight, uh, before we get to Emerson's, before I bring Edwin on, I want to talk about the ultimate steel, as I do at the beginning of every show until it's over. The Ultimate Steel is uh, the Knife Rights uh, fundraising drive, if you will. And uh, you it's a, it's a tiered approach. So you can give whatever you can give, but at certain uh, levels, you get a, uh, a gift back, a thank you gift. I got a SOG Terminus uh, when this show donated uh, 560 bucks uh, from, the, uh, from the auction we did uh, from stuff uh, collected during the... Um, the town hall. So uh, Ultimate Steel, definitely check it out. Uh, without knife rights, without this kind of, uh, without someone on that wall uh, protecting our, our knife rights, things could go badly. So uh, if you can, uh, give to the Ultimate Steel and uh, know that you've helped the cause. Next, uh, well, next, I want to bring on Edwin. Edwin, it's very good to have you, sir. Nice to be here, man. Thank you. Thank you. So um, we've been talking a lot of Emerson's. I've been talking a lot of Emerson's recently uh, because I've, I've, uh, I've gotten a few. And uh, it came up a, a couple of times on last week's show, and I figured I need to bring Edwin on. He is our resident expert. You're, you're kind of like a – you ever see that show uh, Pawn Stars on History Channel? You know, yes. so, someone brings something in. They're like, wait, I got a guy. You know, if, if I had a pawn shop and people – you know, someone brought in an Emerson, I'd go to you. Edwin. Bill S. says, Edwin, I have to ask if you saw the eBay uh, custom prototype Emerson Sheepdog, Sheepdog Flipper. flipper. Mm. No, that's that's too high, man. That's too high, Bill. Just uh, just more in the 2000 and a little bit less. 1800 product. So, so that's kind of the going price for a prototype, something like that? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And more for a custom as well. Yeah. Well, so Edwin, what were you carrying today? I know you had an epic mail call today, so maybe maybe it changed halfway during the day. Show us your day in well, In the morning, I started, of course, with the CQC6, because actually what happened with this, I was changing that clip right there. That's a uh, steel flame uh, clip right there that I was changing and, and, you know, trying giving it a shot, how it feels and all that. So, so before before you before you move on from the six, let people know if they don't uh, what, what the story is with the six. So the CQC six, right, is that custom that Ernest Emerson was making for some of the you know special operation guys, and this is the knife that the CQC seven was based on, right? Benchmade asked uh, Ernest Emerson if they can prototype the CQC six. And Ernest was like, no, you know what? I'm going to keep the six as a custom, and then I'm going to create a new model based on the six, and that's the six is seven. So nice. I we're talking, you know, in the 90s, right? So this is <laughs> right, right. Back in the day. So uh you had a wardrobe change after the mail came, and and what happened then? Yes, yes. I got this uh pretty rare Emerson, I will say. It's called the Asec Marud. Uh, it's not a common one, I will say. It's a custom as well. And the Asek Marut was saw it on the ECA in 2004. And ECA is the Emerson Collection Association. Um, so very, very rare. And I'm pretty happy. I just got it. I'm still in the 
honeymoon phase <laughs> and all that. So, you know. I, I have not, I have never, I mean, because I, I have a list of unicorns I want to go over later when we're really diving into Emerson's, but I have never seen that one and it is beautiful. Can you, can you say again the name? Asek Marut, if is, I'm is, saying it correctly, but you know. Yeah. Is that someone's name or is that a thing? So, no, that's just, that's just, uh, I think Asek is, it means Scottish and stuff like that. Yeah. Something like that. I'm still doing my research and learning about that specific model. I it's can't very, wait. To, very rare. I can't wait to see the video on that. If you if you haven't seen Edwin's uh, channel on YouTube, you have to check it out. It's uh, Callow Blades, and 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 he's just going uh, <laughs> relentlessly through this epic epic collection hey. of Emersons, and it's awesome. I need to say that when I saw your videos of making the collection, I was like, okay, I need I I can probably do a two two minutes three minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, keep it keep it short and quick. As always, carry the Super 15, Victoria Knox oh, work gosh. champ. Uh, and Jim, go back to that last one. Um, it was an HEA design, HEA design equilibrium, equilibrium V2. Too. I need to check that one out. Kind of like. Is is that that really sweet looking um, kind of uh, uh, recurve tanto with a really long opening hole? I'm curious. Justin Small, how you doing, Justin? Good to see you, sir. I usually change my carry once a day. I'm carrying my bug out at the moment. That's funny. So I have this weird thing uh, since, you know, I've had a bourbon. So I'm going to tell you about this weird thing I have where um, when I start the day with it, I got to, I got to carry it all the way to the end of the day. That doesn't mean I can't bring others on board, uh, you know, for, for company, but it, it's got to start. It's got to end with the one I start with. Uh, what was that last one? That was a, that was a, Praetorian, I think. Yeah. Beautiful. Carrying my Conus area, Koenig areas. Rhino, Kaiser, the Kesmec, I know that. The Bestec Rhino, oh, that's a really weird looking blade. I like that, I like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And by the way, Bill, I, I read that you were carrying the Super 15 is Hey Dave, how you doing, man? I'm sorry, what were you saying about the CQC 15? That Mr. Bill was carrying the Super CQC 15. That's a huge, huge knife right there, so that's great. Yeah, I, I had, uh, that's on my list of Emerson's that I sold and regret. And, and I pretty much, uh, pretty much regret them all now because I'm, I'm, I'm in that phase. TRM, Adam, I really would love to get my hands on one of those pocket check. Cody Usler, OD. duck bolster lock in OD my card. I'm not sure what it is, but I know I like uh, the handle. Yes. So yeah. man. Nice. Right. Hellraiser. Oh. Hellraiser, yes. Oh, I and I always have with me, like similar to you there, where I have it today, yeah. The La Griff, right? I'd always have this. Oh, yes. This always needs to be with you, right? This is no problem. That is sweet. Hey, Edwin, back in the day, my favorite was the CQC8 banana. It's still... Yes, I think, yes, man, the CQC8 might be the most ergonomic handle in that I have. Experienced. Right on. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you. I will absolutely check out his channel. I need to get, yes. Uh, oh God. Yeah. Metal. Uh, it's funny. Yeah, <laughs> he just put up a video today about the Maximus. And um, uh, I always kind of vowed I was never, I wasn't going to get a Maximus until it came out in, um, in the triway pivot. Cause uh, I don't know. Cause I'm, I guess I'm, I'm getting like that. But, but what I really would like is the fully double edged. Just, just cause I, I like that. Nasty. Yeah. 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 But uh, I got to check out. I didn't watch Metal's video. Nice to see you, sir. Good to have you. Uh, well, coming up, I'm just looking at my own. Oh, knife news. Okay. Well, let's let's go right into it. Actually, um, the uh, I sent you two knives that I want to talk about, uh, and they're both by Tommaso Rumici. And I just like saying Tommaso Rumici um, from Italy, right? The guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and he's been uh, pretty prolific lately. Um, but he's got this knife, the El Capitan, and it's for Summit Knife Company. You remember Summit Knife Company? Yep. They, interesting little knife they came out with the Half Dome uh, a little while ago. Well, this is on the whole other end, and this is on my end of things. Um, Same with me. Yes. With me. Four inch blade, right? And it's got the uh, it's got the micarta handles. Yummy, and it's got a really broad blade. So it's a it's a saber grind in that it's a flat grind, but not quite to the top. And uh, but it's so broad, it's going to act something like a uh, a full flat ground because uh, you know there's just a lot of room on that blade to to do shearing, and uh, yeah, and it, I I love that micarta and you know that blade design. Yeah, it looks great. 
Do you have any experience, uh, Edwin, with the uh, Half Dome or any other? Uh, or I no, guess that's but, but I remember uh, watching the Knife Center video about the Half Dome. Mm -hmm. and I was like, man, that knife, if it was, because I think the Half Dome is 2.8 inches. Yes. So I was like, man, if it's, if they make it at 3.5, that, that's my, you know, 3.5, a little bit bigger. And this one is 3.9 inches, right? So yeah, three, yeah. So 3.5 is your entry entry size for so for Blade, I, I right? know what knife. It's just it's just that I'm I'm in that wave now of 3.5 up, you know. Got you, got you. Uh, oh, hey, I wanted to mention lavender pants. Uh, great name, uh, as as uh, Brian always says over at Slicey Dicey. Um, he super chatted last week, and a super chat. I I was totally unaware of what this was, but uh, he he sent me five bucks on a super chat. So I want to thank you, Lavender Pants, if you're out there and you're watching. Oh, there's a <laughs> there's a still. I like it. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> um, I really appreciate it, Lavender Pants. Lavender Pants 86. Uh, wow, that that's like really awesome. Dude, thank I, you. I love that name, Lavender Pants. <laughs> no, so do I. <laughs> I told my wife a guy named Lavender Pants gave me five bucks last week, and she was like, huh? And I was like, that's his username on YouTube. She's like, that's an awesome name. So it's uh, it's um, it's uh, what's what's the word? Oh, God, what a flake. Uh, Thomas, I'm with Edwin. I like 3.5 to 6. Yes. Uh, 6, I'm with you, Thomas. Right, exactly. That sweet spot between 3.5 and 6, um, <laughs> uh, which is maximized by a lot of the cold steels I happen to have. Jock's knife. Good to see you, yeah. sir. Yes, yes, indeed. So uh, one one last thing about this uh, Rumichi, the, the Summit, is uh, you can get it in M390 or D2, so you can kind of get it in two different grades, and then it comes in G10, Micarta, or bronze on the micarta, front. Yeah, come on, Micarta is the way to go, right? Micarta is the way to go, but I don't know. Something about bronze, if it's actual bronze, is mm -hmm. pretty, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will patina, right? It will do all that. Yeah, yeah, and you'll you'll feel like Odysseus from days of old, you know, carrying around a bronze blade. Yes. Uh, well, obviously, it's not the blade, but of course. <laughs> so yes, I think that's a pretty cool one. And then the other one is also a uh, Tommaso Rumici. And I also want to say I'm getting this information from Knife News. My my favorite uh, go to, you know, Knife Magazine is awesome, and Knife Illustrated is way awesome. And uh, but I go to Knife News a lot, and I'll, I'll pull some uh, articles from there. And this these two today jumped out at me because Tommaso Rumici. Yeah, come and, on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, come on. Uh, so he's got a, a new one out with Fox Knives. Uh, it's called. It's tactically inspired. Uh, it's it's called the old uh, the Ferox. Now we've heard the word Ferox used in another knife. I believe it's a Ferrum Forge Ferox. Yes. Uh, yes, you're right. But Ferox means fierce or uh, some other sort of. Uh, uh, words that that infer fierceness and uh it's cool it's like a it's a little almost four inch fixed blade but it's it's got a um you know it's a nice looking tactical flick fixed blade it's got a like a nearly full swedge and a pretty acute point right and some gnarly looking teeth and some jimping uh, what do you think edwin this this could be pretty tactical right yeah i, I like the blade design of this uh then, then it starts getting more complicated. And for me, <laughs> you know, uh, for me, I like to keep nice, being nice. But you can, you can describe what it, you know, it comes with this Phillips screws, right? And you can like, uh, yeah, do multi-tool stuff with it and all that. So yeah, that's uh, I was that, gonna say, that's kind of where you lose me too. Yeah, yeah. But the blade design, man, is great. Um, but yeah, you know, hey. There's choices for everybody, right? I cannot be liking everything. Like That's that. right. And and some people, and this is not me, but some people have a need to uh, condense their tool set into the smallest and lightest possible thing. So this this could be a real advantage. But uh, Jim, can you bring that up uh, one more time, please? Uh, but to me, if I look at this and I kind of squint and I take away the those rubber gaskets and the, and the tool in the middle and I complete the circle and I move the circle down a little bit, it's I mean, an awesome looking karambit, you know? I mean, yes, I mean, I mean, <laughs> yes. So Fox Knives out of Maniago. Also, uh, the Summit Knives, uh, um, uh, the 
So El Capitan also made in Italy. So tonight it's just an, an Italy knife drop kind of night. Sweet spot for the blade length for me is 3.2 to 3.6, says Spirited Whiskey. Yeah, that's that's a great, great length as well. I, yeah. I, I spirited, you know, in my case, like I was telling Bob, I, I go through phases, right? Right now I'm in the phase of 3.5 to 4, whatever, you know, or 5 inches blade. Yeah, it's like, but yeah, I, I, sometimes I'll go to my CQ6 that is just, you know, 3.4 or so as well, so. Well, I just got, um, I just recently, okay. Uh, I'm going to start talking about what I got. Yes, <laughs> this is yeah. what I got because uh, as uh, someone said, uh, let's see, uh, it was uh, Everyday City Carry posted a video by uh, another person from the community, EDC community, who, who called this adult show and tell. And uh, really, you know, I, I think if you want to keep a healthy perspective, he is 100% right. It is yes. adult show and tell. And it's, a, it's, a, it's a, also a way that a lot of us can connect on a light and neutral ground and, and enjoy, you know, it's an enthusiast community. So, yeah. For sure, show for and tell. Sure. So let me, let me show and tell. Okay. So, so I also go through phases uh, pretty much in everything in life. Um, but recently, our good friend Alex Tissot from Alex's Knife Box sold me his Iron Dragon, which really uh, re-wet my appetite for um, Emerson knives. Uh, you know, I, I had uh, I always come back to them, but I frequently, uh, you know, obviously I, I like other knives too. I love hinderers, and I'm always trying to get my hands on something new to try it out. I uh, I actually I have a um, I have a bad monkey coming. I'd like to talk to you a little bit later about Southern Grind, if we can remember. If you yeah. can help me remember. Okay. I, 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 sure, for sure. For sure. Okay, because they're, they're kind of in the same ballpark. So anyway, uh, I got this uh, Iron Dragon. It wet my appetite. That was a while back. And then uh, recently, I went on a little uh, spree because there were some really fantastic deals, and I got rid of a couple of knives. And uh, Jim's snickering. No, you didn't, Bob, he's saying. Um so I got this mini CQC7. Nice. Fully nice. chisel ground, which is, oh, that's what I'm into right now. Except yeah. I want to get the one, the tactical concept ones where, where it's the chisel is on the other side. It seems like it makes more sense for a right handy, uh, right hand. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I have this one. It's tactical elements. And what Bob means is that normally, right, the CQC7 will have the grind on this side. And tactical elements is making it in the right side. And um, basically, it basically, you know, function as a, you know, as a normal chef knife, right? Or something like that. So, yeah, I mean, if you think of uh, how the regular CQC7 is uh, set up, you know, when it's chisel ground, that is the standard seven, it's set up for a right hand, you know, in, in right. every way, and including like the, the little occlusion for, op for the, uh, for the opening and, uh, you know, the clip and everything. You would think that the flat would be on the other side because then, then you would really be able to take a better advantage of its chisel nature and tactical elements. I guess uh, are you from? Uh, uh, what do you know about these guys? Um, oh, they've been in the hey, game. Before. Good to see you, sir. Before, hi. Uh, yeah, they've been in the game and for a long time, and they have exclusives not just with Emerson but with a lot of these uh, U.S. Uh, makers, right? And uh, they are. Since I remember, you know, for example, one of the first super commanders came from them. Okay? Oh, so, God. so this guy, they've been since the 90s, right, with, with doing all these exclusives. And lately, <laughs> lately for Emerson perspective, they've been doing exclusive with Green Micarta. And usually for Shizzle Grind, they're going with the right hand, Shizzle Grind, like Bob what it's, was explaining, right? And FYI, but what I heard from Ernest, I don't know if you asked him, is that that decision of the grind is it was purely aesthetic. It oh, was, you, yeah, I, I always imagined it was because it's a it, the grind is always so beautiful, and you, you would you, you kind of want to see it on that side. It, yes, it yes. stands to reason. I just um, <laughs> well, a factory option would be awesome. It's a good thing that Ernest has you guys keeping him in business. What are you talking yeah, about, Dave? On, <laughs> I think I think I think Dave is uh, perhaps once bitten, twice shy. Uh, let's see. Hello from Switzerland. All right, wow. man. Good to see you, Yannick. 
Yannick, are you a are you a fan of Emerson Knives? And uh, I know Switzerland's got some pretty uh, pretty nice laws. Uh, are they permissive with knives? I, I'm pretty sure they are with with other types of weapons. Thomas, wow, how big is the blade on the Super Commander? Yeah, that's a beautiful one. Is that from the late '90s? Uh, yes, yeah, actually, this is the one of the first ones that has a true satin finish, meaning that Ernest was the guy doing the satin finish on it. Mm. And yeah, this is like 4.2 or so, I think. I need to get back to you, but something like that. It's a huge, huge knife. I love it. I, I have, um, so the first Emerson I got was my first internet knife purchase. And it's this 2000 Emerson uh, that I got from uh, from Knife Center nice. way back in the day. And I ordered it, and I, I was expecting it to be there the next day. Everyone's heard this story if you've, if you've heard me talk about it. But um, I was expecting it to be there the next day because the only other thing I had ever purchased online was a Mac, uh, you know, from, from Apple. And they just sent it, and, you know, they FedExed it to me. And I thought, like, that's what happens when you, when you buy on the Internet. Oh, it, like, appears oh. the next day. And this, uh, I didn't realize, like, they had started, they, they were finished making commanders for another like year. <laughs> so they, wow, they were wow. making something else. And, and, and then I just sort of assumed I, I lost it down the internet hole, like that money was gone. And then one day uh, I show up to my, uh, my desk at work after lunch and there's a box there and I'm, well, what's this? And I open it up and boom, you know, it was awesome. <laughs> yes. I forgot all about it. There it was. Big Boar says, Troy, fist, fist. What does that mean? Satin. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. yes. Agreed. Agreed. Yes, for sure. So you recently posted a video about this knife, which inspired me uh, when I actually saw one up for sale to get. Uh, this is the... S-O-C-F-K. Yeah. Yes. Tell me a little bit about this knife. So and, uh, what you know about it? Yeah, so that knife is a uh, it's a combination of three of their models: the Specwar knife. That I don't know if I have it somewhere here, but the Specwar knife handle that is that handle that you see right there. And they they wanted to make sure that they included the wave of the commander because at that time the commander was the only one with a wave. Mm -hmm. they, plus they wanted the blade of the CQC7, and the CQC7, you're not aware, comes in Tanto, and it comes also in that, you know, spear point style uh, or drop point style blade, right? So, so it was a combination of that that was a requirement by one very specific department in the Navy for them, you know? So very nice, very nice. I love it. I love it when they have stories like that, you know. Yes. Uh, a, a a an unspecified but very specific. Very specific. Uh, yes. So uh, two comments I want to comment on. Uh, Dave Everett uh, says one one thing that he really really uh, admires about Ernest Emerson uh, is his martial arts prowess. Yeah, he is. He's uh, he was a uh, you know, trained with Danny Nosanto from the time he was nineteen. He's and and Richard Bustillo, who this is you know who the Iron Dragon is named after. Yeah. So uh, the man knows what he's doing, and, and he's developed his own uh, kind of uh, styles with this. No, he does not. He does not, does he? He does not, but sometimes they release uh, limited production of it, so be aware of that. Sometimes they will release a limited release of it, you know, the so, year. So, Dave, uh, um, if, if you like the Persian, what about the, 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 Quake, the Quaken? 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 Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean that is beautiful, and and it's a very similar upswept blade. Yeah, um, we al we also had someone else saying that the Kershaw, uh, uh, the Kershaw XL10 was his only one, and uh, I got to say that's an awesome knife. I I had one for quite a while. It was my my car knife, be just because, and uh, uh, I had this whole fantasy around it. Um, you know, well, whatever. Uh, so that knife uh, was excellent. Uh, really, really smooth, but I, I ended up selling it off in a lot of uh, other knives. So, uh, but but uh, put up the. I'm sorry, Jim. Uh, you had uh, there was one from Yannick from Switzerland, and I think maybe he was uh, responding to something. I really like the Super Commander. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh, you don't yeah. like the wave? Okay, wait. I never really had numbers on first, but I don't like the wave feature on other models. But you do yeah. like the wave? Yeah. 
Yes, and you know, um, like with everything, you know, sometimes, you know, the wave work really well in some models, right? And then there are other models like that Persian that I, I'm totally fine without a wave, right? And this is a big, right? That's that's a big. There's one of those blades that Ed Calderon used to carry down in the border of Mexico. So, but I will talk about Ed Calderon later. But you know, so so yeah, very. And and let me tell you, the CQC7, I prefer the CQC7 without a wave, uh, like that one. And again, it's just because I, I'm used to it. I was exposed to a Benchmade CQC7 back in 90. Oh, uh, yeah. And that's how I started the whole problem of knives. You know? <laughs> the whole problem. I like that. <laughs> Switzerland has pretty easygoing knife laws. You can basically carry everything that's not assisted or double-edged. No restrictions on blade length whatsoever. Well, yeah. they're way ahead in Switzerland. What can I say, man? That's nice. that's, that that's seems nice. That seems pretty good. Dave Everett, I'll check in to see the Quake. And, oh, yeah. I think... I think you'll dig it. I think that that knife yeah. looks especially good in black. And, the, and it's very, very, you know, it's, the package is good, and you can even modify it if you need to, right? So, so, yeah. so, so Alex says the Iron Dragon is the best, and uh, I, 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 I agree. I, I agree with that as well. Okay, I have. Oh. Two <laughs> oh yeah. So wait, let's see the difference. You you have a custom there and a and a. There's uh, one with a custom handles. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. And then the other one, but they're the same. Yeah, the same. Just some custom handles. Yeah, as I mentioned before, this this came from Alex, and and Alex uh, always puts some personal tweak on knives that is so cool, and he he put this uh, gray precision opening disc on it. Nice. And uh, yeah, that's one of the things I like about. Emerson and of course hinders are the same thing. And Me too, bad monkey. And you have all those customization and still flame things and thumb stuffs and yeah, you know, it's beautiful. So oh, so you. um so bad monkey says he loves the chisel grind and and so uh, I have to say two things. I like both. I like the chisel relief edge uh, on a on a V grind like this, and yeah. I also love the the fully chiseled. So I have a few of these. That uh, the the peace arc, which is one of my favorites. It's like a little ganunting, little pocket. Oh, you have a peace arc, nice. Oh yeah, I love this knife. Um, I can remember, <laughs> I was at a family barbecue. My my in laws, uh, my my wife has a huge family, and we were at a barbecue. Dude, oh my god! And uh, and I remember I got an alert from I don't know I don't remember what what uh, knife. Uh, purveyor it was what online store it was but they were like look man we're putting this on sale and i was like oh my god i like rushed to a <laughs> rush to a private room got out my wallet i'm like yes so uh can't get rid of that one uh yeah. but uh yeah i love the the fully chisel same with me same with me i love one of my favorite well you know yes i love the chisel i love the chisel and no problem with that, like, you know, the karambi chisel and all that is uh, mm -hmm. definitely one of my favorites. So. so what do you say to people who, uh, you know, take exception to it or think it's weird or lazy? Uh, you know, they people have their opinions, right? In my case, I definitely use, uh, what what was the Benchmade steel, AT, ATS? ATS 34. I use a CQC7 ATS 34, you say? Yeah. And and with that knife and with that steel, I I was cutting through material like crazy when I was a helper mm -hmm. of a trucking company. Okay, and and I did a lot a lot with that CQC7, and that and that's when I was like, you know what? I love this chisel for it. Oh, right. thank you, Jay, man. Thank you. <laughs> hey, uh, go back one, Jock's knife. He says this is his jam, and and yes. and. Jock's knife happens to be up in Scotland, so it's it's no surprise that this is his jam because I know the Vikings were up there quite a bit, and uh, this is a, a Viking knife, man. I love the sax. Actually, um, you know, I was talking about how uh, Alex's Iron Dragon got me back into it, but really, what got me back into it last summer? Oh my God, yeah, you I make me that. jealous, man. No, no, was no, this no. knife when this came out? I was like. 
I want to see more Warren Cliffs and Sax blades from him. I mean, he's a he's a damn Viking already. He should be making more of these, and and he should do this. Watch this. Wait. Yeah, yeah. The Sax is a beautiful blade. I I look also at, have. Look at that. How cool would that look? The oh, sax the, with the sticky things. Yeah, the thirteen handle on the yeah. sax. Yes. 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 All right. I mean, I I mean, I can do that all day, but uh, let me see. I like the Emerson make chis I'd like to see yes. <laughs> I'd like to see Emerson make a Kiridashi with a chisel grind around three inches. Yeah, that that actually is in perfect keeping with what I was just saying. More of these kind of blades. And of course a Kiridashi is kind of the Japanese version of a sax or vice versa, or not that they ever intersected historically, but they're the same shape, basically. Yes. Yeah, so and just to tell the guys in the, you know, be aware, I also own other knives, okay? It's not <laughs> but, you know, for the most part, I'd like to collect Emerson's. But. Okay, so forgive me if this is extremely gauche, but give me some sort of idea of how many Emerson's you have. So, uh, something like last time, like 127 or so. Oh, man. That's the cat. <laughs> that's awesome. That's don't be embarrassed. Jeez, man. It's <laughs> that's 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 pretty cool. I mean, I, I can see going down that rabbit hole. But you said you have other knives. I know you you love Buck 110s. You have a number of custom Buck 110s. Few Buck 110s, um, yeah. I I I I have several fixed plates. For example, I got this uh where I have this William Blades, right? That this one is made by Lions. Oh yeah, yes. Right and and again, so you know. Um, uh, and what else? Some spider coats. I love some of the spider coats, and I don't have, and I need to fix that. I need to have a hinder. Right? Oh, I, yes. I, I need to fix that. I I went to the rabbit hole of striders, but I kind of backed off a little bit because, mm -hmm. you know, it's too much, right? Emerson striders, everything is too much. Yeah, the striders i i have a great strider and uh it's an smf and uh that's a weird that's a weird hole to go down yeah. it's a, <laughs> that's a weird thing to say too but you know what i mean like uh yes i i don't understand the company that much i know they've they've done some things and uh but i was i was very lucky and happy to get my hands on on the one i have yeah oh, but and one thing i will say is that in my case because i have for the most part, always carry Emerson's with me. Mm -hmm. I'm so used to the thickness of of this liner with you know with with G10 or my Carta that when I get a really thin knife and stuff like that, mm -hmm. it doesn't feel right. So so it's also something to do with me, you know, and all that. So yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> let me see what what you just held up. That was a little tease. You held up the Elvia. Let's talk about the Elvia. You just received it. Tell us all about it. It's a brand new knife from Emerson. That is a it's a limited yeah. production. It's a limited production. Be aware that they made the first run last week, late last week, right? And then there's a second run. And again, I'm not getting paid by Emerson or anything like that. I'm just letting you know that uh the second run they're taking pre-orders until tomorrow okay and then that's it for this mm -hmm. one and this elvia comes from the uh it's a collaboration with ed calderon and ed calderon is a guy that he's been you know in the business for a while and he's training our guys regarding the whole border uh mexico and u.s borders and, and you know all the politics there and all that and he has a lot of knowledge regarding uh, how i say it urban tactics and and stuff like that and, and this is his elvia design and basically it's a little fruit knife right it normally is a fixed blade i know that uh he wanted one very interesting thing about this is that ed calderon he used to, you know, just like us, post in the forums and all that. And every time he posts his everyday carry, he was using the Persian. Mm. Right? That, one, that one, his blade. This was his blade when he was. That's there. a that's a scary damn blade. You pull that thing out, yeah. man. Yeah, this is it, right? But but his ultimate backup weapon was a little fixed blade that he called Elvia, uh, that his mom names is Elvia, so he's based on that. 
And you can see that's his logo, that's Ed Calderon's logo. And the whole concept, right, is to hold it like this, right? And the whole concept is that whole, how you say, you know, carving. Trapping. Trapping. That's, uh, you know, when you, when you, uh, when you. Yeah. yeah. And, and if you guys, you know, you guys can look in Google for Libre fighting and stuff like that, and, and you will see the applications of this little knife. It's a 2.7, 2.8 inch blade. I will not, I used to have something not like this, but a little bit straighter for actually opening fruits and stuff oh, like yeah, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. They call that, a, a, they often call that Pical style. Pical, Pical. Uh, after a Filipino style of, of edge in uh, reverse reverse grip fighting. Uh, so you got, they have the edge pointing. I think Edwin convinced me to buy a rendezvous. What's oh, a rendezvous? Yeah. The rendezvous. Let's see if I have it here. Oh, is this I another think. unicorn? I mean. No, no, no. This is one of the. So last year, Emerson released a lot of utility hunting style of knives, right? He released, oh, yes. He released sure. the carnivore, right? This yeah. is one of them that is their, their steak knife, that. right? It's very, you know, a steak knife style. And this is usually very simple, right? And then he released the rendezvous and the Overland Renegade that have that high grind on the Oh, food. yeah. Okay, and I, it's very, very utilitarian style of EDC. And yeah, he was, uh, and I'm glad, man, that's a great blade, FYI. So, so is the Rendezvous the last one you held up, A and B? Is it is it a thinner, you said it's more it's utility a, oriented, is it a thinner ground blade? The Rendezvous looks like this one, but the blade is a little bit thicker, you mm. know, say taller. Yeah. Okay. And it's more for including skinning and, and camping and all that. Uh, so, so yeah, it's it's a it's the same style of version of knife. So uh, I want to get back to the Elvia, uh, but before we do, Jim, yeah, thank you. Are there production Emerson's with a smooth clip side? I can't stand knives that eat my pockets. You know what? I do it every time. I'll 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 uh, I'll just take it take off the clip and sand it a little bit, and uh, yeah. um, actually. Uh, I sanded down my whole 13 because it, it really, you know, really destroyed, uh, you know, a bunch of pants. And I was like, this is never going to, it doesn't take long for, for most of the G10 to wear down. But for some reason on this, it was like carrying an emery board. I'm looking at a rendezvous right now, actually a custom, of course. A yes, custom. Yes. I can't wait to see it. Oh. Yes, sir. And, and so, so, you know, this is the LVI It's very, it might, opinion self-defense right uh like you say bob right if you're in an alley and you need to you know uh, fight what seven people at the same time <laughs> yeah one of those knives right yeah. uh, uh so you know really really small one of the things that emerson or ernest was mentioning as well is that with that small blade right you can hold it like this right if you don't want to mm -hmm. uh, uh using that tip against you know against someone and do some type of rescue operation and stuff like that right so you know, it's it's a. I think it's going to be a huge success because if you've been looking at tactical uh, style of fightings and all that and, and trainings and all that, mm -hmm. this LVI has been all over the place all the time. You know, the fixed yeah. Um, uh, who is it? A Copus Blade Works makes a fixed blade version of that, uh, yeah. and then I mean, license. You know, license. Or, or made with Ed Calderon or in collaboration with. Yes. Um, and then another thing I wanted to mention is you can hear a great podcast with him. Uh, he was on the Joe Rogan podcast yes. uh, maybe four or five, six months ago. And man, it's fascinating. Uh, it, that's That was the first time I had heard of him actually. Yeah, so, I, and I have followed him for a while given that, that, um, that how I stored my collection. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Uh, I've been following it a lot because you know I'm in Texas and I'm always you know curious about all the politics and and when I say politics I mean the dynamics in the border and all that so it's always oh, yeah. very interesting and and he's this guy he knows the internals of all this stuff so he's very very interesting yeah yeah and that's why and this... one, of, one of the things that I might need your help with in the future because I have I have taken some training classes with LBS okay with part of Libre Fighting but one of the questions that people are asking me right away is like, hey, how it compares with the Karambit, mm -hmm. right? And I will say that I don't have a vast knowledge 
or training with the karambe other than you know i know obviously it's like a claw rider mm -hmm. but yeah it's I, for me it looks like different style of operations right this one is going on reverse and this one is going like this right yeah but, but we can discuss that in, in offline. Yeah, offline. Yeah, yeah, and, <laughs> and that would be that would be fun. And actually, Dave might be an interesting person to uh, to bring in on that conversation, as he has a lot of experience with uh, Filipino martial arts as well. And he says that's not just an oddly angled karambit, is it? And I would say no, only because it's based off of. Uh, yeah, that angle is odd. It's a negative angle to me. Yeah, it's like, sure. uh, so unless unless you're using it in certain ways and the way you grip it in reverse grip, uh, Edwin, the way it looks in your hands, yeah, yeah, that'll work. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah, that, that will do it. That yeah, it. yeah. So, um, but yeah, it is at a at a at an odd and kind of startling angle. It looks like I think Alex uh, said. Uh, months back when when they were first um announcing this we were talking about it and he said it looks like the stop pin is broken and uh yeah it's odd yeah. and you can tell that it's based on um the the platform of a of a real uh what's the word like a real used tool it's like a kitchen knife tool that that it's based on a carving knife yeah carving yeah yeah the kind of thing you hold in one hand and like you were saying you peel a yeah, yeah this, this type of operation is very used for it for sure uh, so i i i want to get into some emerson unicorns and so let's start with the one that you got today what is this this thing it's crazy yes yeah so like we were talking about it's called the asec marud very rare right emerson very rarely do, does uh I, let's let's not say spidey hole but you know an opening hole, hole yeah an opening hole right there and he has that rigor. It's a V grind and that beautiful rigor right there. And yes, the the only time we saw this design is in a 2004 release of the uh, Collectors Association Group. So very, very, very interesting. I, it's a, definitely a, a rare knife. Another rare that you know. Wait, wait. I'm sorry. Before oh, you move on, uh, Edwin, what's the blade size on that? It looks like it's over four inches. Is it? This is 3.9 inches. Okay. Wow, man. So he's that's riding awesome. my yeah. It's like I, you need the room for all those graceful curves yes, to yes. take place. That is gorgeous, man. For sure. Yes. If you ever grow tired of it, um send it your way or something. You know. <laughs> for sure, man, for sure. So what was the uh the other one you were about to pull out? Yeah, the the other thing I was going to mention is that another rare one, right? Is oh the gypsy, gypsy jack. Gypsy jack. And for me, I really like it because it looks like uh, oh man, Navaja. Navaja. Like Navaja, exactly. And hey, I love that Navaja style as well. So the Gypsy Jack is another of those very rare. This is actually a mini Gypsy Jack because mm. the Gypsy Jack is a little bit bigger. Oh, jeez, so yeah, it is. I'm aware of that, you know. So I don't know here. So but, this know, is this is one of those designs that. Uh, I love the Navaja. It's a to me, it's a huge inspiration. It's such a beautiful shape, and to me, the Gypsy Jack, I have to say, is awkward. It's an awkward looking knife. Something about something about the area where where the the blade meets the handle. It should be a little wider, and it, something I don't know what it is. But yes. when I see it in your hand, it looks different. It, it looks it definitely looks cooler in hand. It looks like a, a pure <laughs> fighter. Yes, for sure. And, you know, I, it's one that I will say I don't carry that much just because I don't know what I can do with that blade. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a lot of... Besides, it in a pirate. Or yeah, something. exactly. I need, I need mentally to know, okay, this is what I can do with this blade and stuff like that. So, so I read so well. Hey, Alex, oh, how you Alex. doing, man? What's up, man? So good to see you, sir. Hello, gents. So uh, I got got to ask you, what were you carrying today? Who? You. Me? Yeah, Me? you. Uh, I, I was messing around with a few things, but uh, <laughs> I got I got this uh, I got this production shamwari thing. Oh wow. yeah. What is the blue mat the in the pivot? What type of material is that? So this is what they call the sham weary because it's <laughs> produced by we, right? 
so it's a production knife it was a cluster when they decided to actually sell these things but it's supposed to be an exact replica of the three inch shamwari which is cool because i've been wanting to buy a shamwari since before they were even popular Hmm. so for me this is kind of like an inexpensive way to kind of see how they fit in the hand if i would like it if it's worth pursuing Right. And this was you got that in the secondary market, or you got it as part of a release, right now? Uh, I got it secondary, actually. Okay. 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 So, Alex, do you know the the full story of that release? Yes. It, it was kind of a. I know there were some computer glitches and all sorts of stuff, right? I don't know yeah. what. What is this? I don't know this. What happened there? So, so everybody was excited because everybody knows how hard these knives are to get, right? Okay. So they made 500 production ones of these and then these are only sold by gareth bull he did not allow anybody else no we branded knife no nothing like that right it's only gareth bull that sells these so this is technically still considered a real gareth bull it's okay. just produced by we knives right so the first batch was 500 um they had com- uh, computer problems day one where the night the the guys were trying to buy it and refresh and it wouldn't like load in the cart and then there was a glitch like okay. that with autofill that kind of messed everything up and this thing happened two or three times within a span of three days and on the last day it failed and basically the bulls said hey guys sorry looks like we'll have to plan on on another day and then an hour later they figured it out and they released the knives and half of the people were like wow. and it was on labor day or memorial day too right 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 <laughs> so people were like dude you told me it's not going to happen and then you released it people weren't even paying attention anymore so slicey dicey does a good video on it yeah he actually uh, explains it better than i do but Wow. I pay this thing. I think they were like two eighty five ish, two eighty three, something like that. Nice. I paid three sixty five. So the guy had it up for four hundred and seventy five bucks, and I told him, "Look, dude, I'll overpay you for it. I don't care. <laughs> I don't mind, but I'm not gonna give you four hundred and seventy five dollars for a week. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, I'll be generous. I'll give you three fifty. <laughs> and then he said, "No way, man. I I, I can sit on it." And then he hit me up the later that day and he's like okay 365 i'm like you know what i can't sit for too long (laughs) my ass is getting 15 dollars just take it just send me the damn knife and he 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 packed it really nice it came literally like i bought this thing the day before yesterday so came fast so has it has it been your carry since have you been uh kind of fidgeting a lot with it or you know what do you think of the Wii build is this your first Wii? No, it's not my first. I know you've had some BBs, but yeah, I have. Um, I have a, a really fancy Wii that's one of those integrals with damage steel and stuff like that. Okay. And then I also had a Phonetic Edge Omen for a long time that I sold off. That uh, was really fancy. That's yeah, lots, me produce. Lots of angles and facets on that blade. That's yeah. On that knife. Beautiful knife, not comfortable. Hey Alex, did you see the the knife that uh, Edwin got the uh, today the big giant the Elvia? Oh, this one. Yeah, I watched the Elvia video. The... Oh yes, I won't put my finger in that hole. For sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we are going to be doing an, a town hall. Jim just uh, put up a graphic to remind me. Uh, noon Eastern uh, on Saturday, June second, we have. Uh, one confirmed guest who's awesome, and I just uh, interviewed him for a second time for an upcoming uh, Knife Junkie podcast. Uh, he, he's a guy who, uh, who I have a lot of, of knives from and uh, has a new one out, and uh, it's pretty cool and exciting because it's got a new mechanism, etc. That's I will, all I will say. He will be joining us, and then uh, there are some others uh, that I'm working on who I knew would, know would like to join us. We're just trying to figure out uh, possible connectivity issues. So that's long for saying, join us for the Knife Town Hall. 
uh, Saturday, June 20th at noon. So it'll be fun. And uh, like the old, uh, like the last town hall, we will have guests, but we will have a vastly fewer. Uh, it will be shorter and we'll have a longer time with each guest. We can talk about things and people will have an opportunity uh, to get uh, questions in and stuff like that. So it'll be a lot of fun. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So uh, can I yeah. real quick, because I promised my daughter I will show her favorite knife. Oh, please, please. She, she used it all the time, FYI, guys. So, hey, the trainer. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. So she's that's always cool. using this. She's, you know, she's seven or eight right now. Sorry. So, yeah, that's, that's my cute. favorite knife. So, so my uh, my daughter's like this. It's nice. a fox, it's a fox trainer, but the same thing, and they call it Griffin Finger because. It... Yes. <laughs> but I must say, if anyone has this, uh, do what I'm about to do and grind this thing off. It does nothing but gouge your training partner. Yeah, that's surprising that he. Has and it's a terrible flipper, you know. So <laughs> take it there off. Doesn't need to be there. Done. Okay, I did my duty. I show her knife. Uh, uh, Dave says, just picked up a wee Blacko designed by, oh, oh, Blacko. That's the, that's the big, uh, that's the backlock, the odd backlock with the so cool blade. Do you know what I'm talking about? I haven't seen that knife. It is outrageously cool. The, it's got a, I mean, you were talking about Navajas earlier. It has, it has a real Navaja feel. It's a clip point with a, with a real extreme sort of, uh, clip, uh, Oh, so Alex, do you still have your um, XHD? Well, Emerson? so I, I know I was just going to hop in for a few minutes with you guys. So yeah. I definitely brought some Emersons. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you. Let's see. I only have three left. I'm not like, you okay. know, okay. I'm not a heavy Emerson collector, but these, all of them, except for one I've gotten kind of recently, but all of them for the most part, like this one's been with me for years. And um, oh, that's beautiful. Yes. This is the Sheepdog in S35VN with OD Green Micarta. Nice. Is yeah. that from Tactical Elements? Is that a. Uh, this is in uh, Action Concepts exclusive. Action. Okay. Yes. I and that and one. yeah, he, he's got uh, the Bowie version. So those I, are the two blade styles. Yes. Hmm. I like both styles. Both blades are beautiful, man. The Spear Point and the Bowie. They yep. really are. And talk about the action on these things. I mean, it, it does have lock stick like they yeah. all do. <laughs> yes. But, yeah. but I mean, the action, hey, you Charles, know, people talk about that. action on Emerson's. I mean, it's just, you know. Yeah, it's, running on, it's running so. on bearings. Yeah, and, and let me tell you, the handle of the chip dog is very, very ergonomic. And no problem. If you don't mind, you know, thick handles or... Uh -huh. It's perfect. Got to say, I never considered the sheepdog, but but I do think they're beautiful. Actually, uh, I think the minis are, for some reason, they look better to me. I agree. The minis are very good. Very good. The minis beautiful. are cool. So what else uh, What else do you have there? Oh, Roadhouse. I want to run. This is one that I actually bought from a fellow um, buddy on Inst or Facebook groups. And um, recently, I just got brand new liners put in by Emerson in it. Uh, but it's a signature series. Oh, God. So this one is one that I've always really, really loved the blade shape on. Yep. And this is the Emerson combat system. God, the CSF. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. And, and one thing with the CSF is that it has a favorite handle uh, that I like that is a roadhouse. Yeah. Right. And then it has, let me see. And a blade kind of like a tiger. And the blade yes. is a tiger, right? So we have what, 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 here, here. The blade is a tiger, right? And then it has the handle of the roadhouse. So it's yeah. a beautiful design, man. That design is just. And you can see his little signature at uh, right there on the back. Beautiful, God, man, that is nice. Mm -hmm. So that one stuck around, and then the last one is the uh, monster the monster <laughs> that so cool. that's crazy yes so i actually just out of curiosity i'm not selling it so nobody bother me please <laughs> like when my friend did dirk did the video on this thing 
I had already people like hit me up about it. Yeah. But um, I saw this thing on eBay for thirteen hundred dollars. I couldn't believe it. What? Yeah, yeah, thirteen hundred. Yes, that will go by thirteen hundred because it's a limited release, right? And you won't I see didn't... that again. You won't see this release again for years, man. And in that version that you have, they improve the lock face, they improve the the con obviously construction and all that from the original. So, so this looks right. just like the Kershaw CQC eight K, right? I think it looks like a bulldog, right? Only only in profile. I mean that handle, the angular handle. I was going to tell you just the handle. Yeah. Just yeah, the, yeah, yeah. But that is the so bulldog. comfortable. But the, the coolest part here for people so mm. they know they know what the difference is, is she's thick. Yeah. Like super thick. Chunker. Yeah. And again, you know, people like to talk about how crappy Emerson actions are. Um, I'll show you guys this one and hopefully I don't cut myself. Jeez. There you go. Yeah. So, yeah. He can do a, he can do a, a, uh, you know, he can do bearings just fine. Uh, I can deal with Emerson lockstick because once I open the knife for self-defense, I don't want it to close for sure. And plus Emerson lockstick eventually goes away. It yeah. might take, it might, it might take years for some of them. Like, so, I've had this knife for almost close to four years, Bob. Still? Yeah. <laughs> still, you got to go to the pencil or the, uh, or the therapy. Or the pencil. I just live with it. I'll make a video about it. Just, you know, just put a little bit up. So, Edwin, let me, let me ask you this. Uh, what do you say to people who who complain about, about the machining stuff? Uh, you know, that you can see the machine marks in the jimping, for instance, sometimes. Um to to me, um, there's there's a. Uh, I, I feel like this is the only place where I want to see it or like it or 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 don't take exception to it or whatever. Like, how do you defend that? I'm sure you must. Oh, uh, actually, I I don't defend it that that much because for me, it's more you know this guy. It's not just the knife, right? This guy has been in the business for forty years making knives and. And all the design that he's making is is you know it's huge for this guy. So I don't I don't I don't care that much about that. I care obviously. I don't want a piece of. For example, this is one of the. I I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't I don't have. All right. Wait wait wait. May may I? Yeah. Here's the answer. Who gives the f? <laughs> well. Yeah. I yeah. I mean, if you like the knife, who cares? Why do I'm people not, have to like be so picky at, at like what you're collecting and <laughs> oh you bought an Emerson? Like why? You know, like and, yeah. and I go through it because I've had some over the years and some of them I've posted and I say nice things. And on the group, they go crazy. They love to flame Emerson knives. And one thing for me <laughs> as a collector as well is that even that there's i know there's a bunch of criticism on some of the like things like that but when you go and you put an emerson for sale yeah it's paying its value you know it's oh like, yeah for the most part you sell it for the value or higher no problem you know it's not so so for me as a collector i never face a problem regarding that i know well, the number one critique about emerson is that they're overpriced am i right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's look at it. I mean, it's a titanium liner lock, right? So both both sides are titanium. Mm -hmm. You usually have a decent blade steel. I mean, I don't have a problem with the stuff he uses. You know, if you're lucky, you get the fancier one with the S35, which I think is great stuff. Um, I mean, you know, 250 bucks. I don't know. We knives are about the same, and it's kind of like the same materials. I don't know. That's just me. Yeah, I, I I agree with you. I think I think when you're paying two hundred and twenty four bucks or whatever for a new Emerson, you're 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 paying for American, you know, design and craftsmanship. But really you're paying for his design and his design is yeah. is awesome. And and for me, I like the personality of them. Uh like uh I I like, you know, uh, I've been talking about 
the single versus the double detent recently. Like I love them both. Actually, I've gotten a yep. couple of older Emersons, and I love how they come out. Uh, uh, you know, with that double detent, but also I'm digging this. Uh, you know, bearings Emerson. So, um, yeah, I it. I think it's a it's a taste thing, and some people might say that my tastes are not refined um, because. You know, the chatter on that is not refined, but to me, it's it's not about that. It's about the, I don't know. The I think people need to mind their business. You know, like we're all like, <laughs> I, I agree. We're all collectors. Like, who cares? You know, like there, maybe there's a guy, all he can afford is like a little Kershaw knife or something like that. To me, you guys are all welcome. You guys can all hit me up, chat, whatever. Even if you got like a $25. Kershaw, you know, Emerson knife or something like that. And that's your baby. That's what yeah. it's all about. The other you thing, with, yeah, the other thing in terms of as a user of a knife, and that's one thing that Jay is saying is that I'm very, very comfortable with 154 CM. I like, I know how to sharpen that steel. I know how, you know, how to strop it and how to put it back on edge and all that. And I know how to take down, put back, replace, and do anything on my Emersons, you know? Yeah. Um, and one of the things I really like about Emersons, and some people hate it, but I love it, is that it doesn't matter if it's a crazy looking Bali song or, or a custom, right? Or if it's a custom or uh, this is the Apache or a normal production one, they're all using simple, hardware, you know, and by that, what I mean is that, you know, it's just Phillips screws and, and that's it, just go with it. And all of that, I can, you know, it's hardware that I can just go to my kitchen, take out some material and do it, you know, so it's super easy. Yeah. And, and in my case that I have yeah. kids and I said, life is crazy and all that, this is critical. Eh? I can fix this Emerson's really quick, get back to business and keep going. Well, you guys got to understand too, like with my buddies and Bob knows, I have buddies that they're steel testers. Like that's what they right, do. Right. And like that's their hobby and the knife hobby is to see what steels perform the best and do okay. well. So they snicker at a lot of S35EN, S30 or all that stuff. But, you know, like some of them, I get it. You know, they unbox stuff all day long. And, that's fine for that guy. But for me, you know, S30 is going to be just fine for mm -hmm. daily use. Yep. And I think people went rampant with this whole super steel thing. Cause yeah, I think yeah. the perfect steel depends on what you do with it. And when it comes down to it, you know, the corrosion resistance, how come back, it, how much it comes back to edge and all that good stuff. So. Well, in, in a, in a huge way, it's like, uh, it's like a men's health magazine selling a lifestyle. You know, why are you not writing your blog from the beach in in Belize? You know, you loser. It's the same kind of thing with uh, with hardcore steels. It's like, what? You don't need M390. What are you some sort of a, you know, girly man? Like you need this. It's like an image being sold with the steel. Mm -hmm. If you want to if you want to take it that far. I think 154 CM is awesome. A, a number of people uh, uh mentioned that in the past couple of comments how great they do their heat treat what a great steel it is as a user i know uh, uh you were talking about some of your friends who test steel i know that they love 154 cm it's a great steel you can get it super sharp and uh you know when i you can get it very sharp and it's it's uh it's easy to do and it takes a great edge um and it and it lasts reasonably well and when i was talking with ernest emerson when I was talking with Ernest Emerson, I know that sounds like a name drop, but but I asked him about that. I'm like, people talk about like, why don't you put other steels on there? And he's like, eh, every once in a while, we'll do it in one, you know, S35, you know, and then he and then he dropped some little inside story on the the making yeah. of S35, and um, yeah. you know, so I'm, all, all things considered, you're probably fine with the 154. Uh, yep. One thing, one thing I will say is that uh, as well. And I, I imagine this happened with all these other uh, blade companies and all that is the community uh, involved in Emerson and all that is great. You know, I have great friends in there. I imagine it's the same thing for Hinder and Spider community and all that. So, so you know, there's this group of people that is 
these guys, you know, they share the history. They go back and say, hey, let me just call Ernest Emerson and I will tell you what is the history of this design. This is a Marut. I just got a buddy of mine is going to contact him and oh, just God. talk about it, right? Like, yeah, I'm <laughs> going to ask him. So, you know, that that relationship, that community. <laughs> Sorry, every time you bring that out, I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> Sorry. You know, that community is, is something that I really, really enjoy as a user and as a collector as well. And again, I, I know I know other communities that see that as, as, as well. Yeah. Like, Definitely. So, uh, uh, Alex, before we let you go, I want to say, because uh, we're about to do knife fight, unless oh. you want to stick around for that. But uh, I was going to say, yeah, Alex is going to be on next week, right? Right, 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 right. Cool. And and uh, we'll we'll talk. Uh, sorry, I don't mean to put you on the spot now, but no, no, no. no, no. We, we talked well, about I'm, it earlier. I'm going to pop three new knives for you guys real quick oh, yeah. since I popped them out, and then I'll let you guys go. Well, let's see. So... Bob <gasps> really knows these. <laughs> Gasp. I love that. Yeah. So, but I'm actually going to replace all the hardware. It's got that backspacer thing. I oh, kind of yeah. tried all this stuff with the hinderer. So, um, but talk impressive. About, talk about that backspacer for a sec. Well, is- it doesn't make any sense, but instead of having barrel spacers all the way through, like these guys usually do, which I also have in the brass, mm-hmm. um, I tried this kind of backspacer piece and not realizing that these side screws have to be a certain ones, which means you can only use the silver ones. Oh, so I couldn't use like the matching brass stuff. So now I went and I bought a whole set of black hardware and then a couple mm. of bronze for the front. And I might just, and then I bought a bronze backspacer, so I, I have all kinds of stuff. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but so so this is the DLT exclusive no choil Warncliffe at three and a half inches. Um, and Ed, when you were talking about wanting to get into uh, uh, hinderers, yeah. that I would say if they still have those left, go to DLT. You know how they yeah. have all those awesome exclusives. Okay, I'll check it out. Well, there, Dude, this is a perfect hinderer. And that, Bob will tell you, like I, this is as yeah. cool as they get. Yeah, it really is, and 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 mine is uh, my warning is the is the first uh, triway I've ever had, and unfortunately I dropped it on its tip, and so now I have to. I ha- yeah, that's just oh, what Bob I, and Warren Cliffs. Yeah, that's what I do, <laughs> man. <laughs> so. Um, I have to have. Uh, I think I'm going to have uh, Jared Neve fix it. I, I did a little. A little. Send it to Josh. Have him like do some Frankenstein stuff to it. That's that's the thing. I was thinking of actually hollowing it out. By the way, Alex, let me tell you, my favorite Emerson is one that you own, the CSF. Oh, yes. Oh, geez, that's gorgeous. That's a nice one, though. Yeah, this one is, you know, stealth, whatever, custom. But but yeah, yeah, this is definitely in terms of ergonomics, it has like that... uh, how you call that? The, oh man, I'm blanking right now. But you know, Nur- the knurling. Yeah, the knurling and all that is it's a beautiful, that is very ergonomic, you know, design. Uh, it, it feels like you could tear into someone with one of those. Like yes. they're just the overall, like the curve of it and everything. It just. So, yeah, handle. When, when someone asked me what is my favorite, they're basically the CSF. To me, favorite. that's, uh, yeah, oh yeah, I have an XM24 warning. And I love that, and I would love to see the twenty-four in a in a no choil uh, Warren Cliff. Hey, tier Thank one. You. My personal favorite is L Max, but CPM one fifty four is strong. Second place, yeah, and tough man. I find yeah, L Max. Wow, L Max is super. L Max is really good. I've had good experience with L Max. So, so the last knife uh, knife you guys were both holding up. Um, yeah. To me, that if I were. See, the guys who often do the weapons uh, in movies are gun guys, and they pick great guns, and then they kind of they kind of slack when it comes to knives. I would pick this. This is a very cinematic knife. I think. Mm-hmm. In, I think it is in both. Yeah. It's uh, you know for the big for the big uh, uh, finale, you would use uh, Alex's, so you could see the blade flying around. But for the scene where they're 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 in the you know. C1, C17, and they're going to do a halo drop, and they're getting their gear ready, they'd have uh, Edwin's, you know? 
Yeah, stealth mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure. God, that's gorgeous, man. <laughs> and by the way, for the person talking about Elmas, I did not show you this, Bob. I also it's got this uh, oh, Williams yeah. Blade Elmax from TRC Knives, uh, Quaken. And, that, you know, my car that handles and all that. So, so yeah. who, who makes that? TRC Knives. These guys are from, Alex will know this, L Lithuania? That's it. Oh, Lithuania? My, my Spanglish is coming. Yeah. <laughs> Lithuania. Lithuania. Okay. So, TRC Knives. They're very, very well known for their LMAX, that they, those guys. So TRC is is that is that a readily available knife? Because I love the Williams design, yes, especially it's second on, generation. It's on Blade HQ. Yeah, it's on Blade HQ. Well. TRM or C? I'm sorry. TRC it's knives. Okay. But obviously, TRC knife was the the manufacturing, right? But it will go as William Blades. William. Okay. Blade side. And it's LMAX. Yeah, it's it's a sick, sick quake in there. So, Alex, any anything else you wanna? So, a oh. lot of people have oh. been like talking about the version four, right? So, I brought this out because I've gotten this one recently. I sold my version three, which that knife that I sold it for is still in the mail. But the Spectre version four, which is the liner lock version, Beautiful. is not. It, it looks more refined as far as the machining and everything, mm -hmm. but it does not perform for me as good as the V3. Really? Why? So the action for me, you guys can see, it, it like sucks the blade in. It's yeah. ridiculous. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's. Yeah, from a very, from, yeah, right. So in case, one more time, right? So, but the, the thing is, is every time that the knife, um, here, I'll put it next to my, the speaker. Every time that the flipper tab hits my thumb, there's this annoying, like, click. And I've heard, like, other huh. Spectre owners have it, too. Now it's, it's irritating to me. What do you think is causing <laughs> that click? No, I get it. I get it. That can that can actually ruin the experience, man. And what, and it resonates it? when it when it closes, too. Like when it does that final click, so I think it has to do something with the the liner lock system and the and that detent nub system, kind of like Brian's that they use. Oh. The combination of that, I think it resonates when it opens and closes. Can and there's there's some of them that it doesn't do it. There's some guys that say theirs doesn't do it, but there's a lot of guys that say they do. So their detent is like Brian Nadeau's tab instead of and then and then the other thing i was going to say is sometimes the um the lightning pockets th that you find carved out on the back sides of titanium handles make everything resonate so much louder do you ever notice right. that like the lighter the knife the the louder it i guess that's probably simple physics and i'm just a moron but but yeah it seems like the ones that have the most pocketing are the loudest like my my ZT0920, um, Les George, you open it up, it's like, you know, everyone turns around when you open it. Yeah. So. Well, Alex. Oh, oh. What? what, what is that? <laughs> oh, that, this was the last one, but if you oh, want yeah. me to go no, before no, I... No, 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 no. no. I, just, show it, I just know that you were here for a limited time, and I didn't want to I didn't want to take too much of your time, but I'll take this time. Check All this All right. Out. And then... Um, this is something I'd never thought I'd acquire over the years, but this is a zero tolerance triple seven. So this is the knife that like all the fuss is all about with the matrix, the natrix. Um, this is the herringbone Damascus, Rob Thomas herringbone Damascus, and it's Van X 35 on the bottom and it's fused with copper. It's pretty cool. So, so there's copper in the middle where the two steels meet. I can't, yeah, I think it's going to be hard to pick up. You can yeah. see it better on some of the other uh, ones, but well, your Instagram pictures are beautiful of this knife. That's oh, cute. thank you. Yeah, another crazy action type knife. So, Amazing. Alex, tell us about the story, this design, and the Microtech thing, and all that. Oh man, I'm sorry, your Holt sucks. You can send it my way. <laughs> oh man, you're so generous, dude. That's so nice, man. So, what is the story with this design and 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 the controversy? I, I I was never aware of the full thing. I know it has has to do with uh, Mr. Marfioni and all this. So, what what is that about? 
All right, so let me give you the quick rundown. I'm going to do a full video because my buddy has the old school matrix that looks identical to this one. Mm. But anyways, back in 2009, they announced that they were making this knife and the price back then was 475 bucks. So, um, three year long story short, three years later, it finally comes out when a bunch of people try to pre-order it, um, and backed out because they never thought it was going to come out, kept getting backed up. And eventually, finally, they released it. And I, nobody knows exactly how many exist because they were supposed to be, I think, 500 of them. Mm -hmm. But what ended up happening is they cut production short because they realized they were losing so much money. Oh. So that's why the M390 came out afterwards because it was easier. It was just an, a mono steel instead of this fused Damascus crazy stuff. But what was the whole controversy with Anthony Marfioni and Microtech and that design? So now this knife comes out later, right? Like 2012 now. Mm -hmm. Then at the same time, the Matrix comes out. And the Matrix looks, if you look at the original one, it has that same fuller that's up at the top, same blade shape, mm -hmm. same sculpting, full uh, like that sculpting that you have right here. Mm -hmm. looks almost identical so the knife looked really almost a copy right mm -hmm. so but this knife design was released and talked about three years before so obviously zt was first they fought over it in uh regarding mm -hmm. this sub frame lock design right here yeah, yeah. right first on the knockout right? it's hard to get them on styling but you can get them on the frame lock right that's what zt thought yeah. So that's when they went to court over the subframe lock. And eventually, uh, ZT won, but they settled. And um, years later, uh, Kershaw made the Natrix to make fun of them. Um, <laughs> so that was kind of like... Oh, Natrix. Matrix. I didn't realize the Microtech called it the, the Matrix, and they called it the Natrix. Correct. Uh, it's a little cheap, but okay. You don't have to do that, but that's fine. Beautiful, beautiful knife. Um, I, I, it's interesting because uh, when I worked in the entertainment business, when people stole designs, and I am not implying that, that anyone stole anything, but when something was similar to someone else's property, they'd say, Bob, ideas, they're just in the air. You just kind of grab them. They're in the <laughs> air. I'm like, that's bullshit. I wrote that down. Marfioni says he was challenged by ZT at Blade Show when the 777 came out to be able to replicate it. Then Marfioni built it. ZT said they were interesting. Oh, yeah. my God. Well, that is that is gorgeous. Put up that herringbone blade one more time. And, and Jim, if you don't mind, go full. Now, look at that. Very nice. And you know what's interesting? That, that is too. interesting to put a challenge like that. Say, I bet you can't do it. And they're like, oh, well, I bet I can. And you know what's interesting about this too is that there was a factory custom that came out years later, which is the 0450, the ZT0450, mm -hmm. right? And then, and I have one of those. I didn't bring it, but it comes in the same Rob Thomas herringbone Damascus. Yeah. And the funny thing is, it's actually the same billet that they use these knives for. Mm -hmm. So they had more of this stuff, but they stopped making the knife. Interesting. So that that only kind of adds to its value, especially if you see that same material spread out. I know which which version of the 450 you're talking about. Right. It's yeah. yeah. Uh, see, so Kane says, I get that click on my V4 as well, Alex but mine doesn't suck the blade in like that. I did replace the bearings with skiff rocket glide bearings. Change the action for the bearings. Skiff rocket glide bearings. Man, see, I, this is what I love about any enthusiast community. You can just go that deep. Yeah, I'm well, going to get... And the skiff bearings, have you guys heard of those? No, sir. So I like, know. like skiff, uh, you should get them on the show, Bob. Yeah, all right. He's considered to be one of the most underrated like most affordable custom knives out. I'm actually on a list for a drifter right now. I think skip, mine's going to be done. Made blades, right? Correct. Yeah, and um, I think my drifter will be ready in two weeks. And um, 
he makes some really beautiful blades and uh, he also makes replacement bearings for the knives so if you know the exact size of whatever knife you have even sure. brian nado will go buy some when it's available and use them on his knives wow so, so that's custom an endorsement knife, yeah absolutely uh, that's that's so cool all right i'll definitely check check him out uh, that's kind of funny, but uh, uh, TBH, what's TBH? I'm so old. To be honest. Thickness be behind honest. the, oh, I thought it was thickness behind the edge. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Uh, thickness behind the hedge. Uh, I like when companies compete like that. You get some great results. Yeah. yeah. That's, that competition's a little bit too close, if you ask me. Uh, yeah. But uh, but it, interesting. I didn't, I didn't realize that there was a gauntlet thrown down and that he was... Uh, and that he was um, responding. How about Jason? That Gustin son of Rogan? a gun. So I'm uh, this morning. I'm I'm sitting outside and I'm looking on Instagram and I see African Custom Knives does a video, and it's something that already happened. You know, like it's a recording that already happened like hours ago, and so he's showing off all these knives he has. And one of them was a Jason Guthrie in this purple carbon fiber with this Damascus. It was like the bacon Damascus and uh, beautiful knife. So I go, I go on the website. I'm like, I'm going to buy this thing today. Like this one's going to be mine. And then as I'm watching the video and I'm thinking this, I see that spirited whiskey makes comments and African knife says, Oh yes, yeah, spirited whiskey. I'm like, Oh no. <laughs> And then later on, he posts a picture of it. He bought it. So, little little friendly competition there, huh? Uh, he's always way faster, and uh, he he's above me. You know, he's got well, more money than I do. He's been hitting the mayos recently. Yeah, uh, do you, do you have a, any Tom mayos, Alex? I do not. I don't like mayonnaise. <laughs> well, I'm about to borrow uh, a direware from our good friend. Uh, oh, oh, excuse me, excuse me, Dirk Werning. Oh yes, but, um, uh, he is generously offering me uh, to to borrow his direware, and I'm I'm ready to check that oh. out. That to me, like, um, I don't know, man. I, I I could see selling a number of of cherished knives to get one of those. To me, they're just so beautiful, especially yeah. with the recurve like he has. It's like I'm looking into getting several uh, terzuelas. Oh. Uh, so from, from him so well i'm do it's funny you guys say about dirk because i just um he sent me three of his super thick reese Whelan knives <laughs> so i got <laughs> oh, i got cool. a i got a video coming out Dude, maybe that's... tomorrow on on those knives it's gonna be fun it's a big giant <laughs> yeah, yeah i just did a, like a little tabletop thing for this one because it's just is too much to talk about and there was three of them and there was so much alike so i just grouped it together hey uh do do any of you guys know about this i just bought the new benchmade bailout with uh m4 blade steel i know i like m4 uh waiting on it what do you think of it um yeah that's the one with the uh you've talked about that one before bob yeah the aluminum, the aluminum handles yes yeah. a great but, upgrade from uh it. so it was 3v initially on the first run and it was soft, soft. Right. and so they came out with the m4 which is presumably a little bit harder uh but we know it's a tough steel i i like m4 um uh, i have limited experience but uh, i like it on my uh uh well I'm, in any case well it was plastic handles and soft 3v and now they're and then, and now it's aluminum handles now it's aluminum handles and m4 and m4. everybody knows benchmade does really really good m4 Yes, they my, treat that stuff good. Right, my my only other experience with M4 besides yeah, it is my Contigo, uh, yeah. which was which was awesome, and then I got rid of it in a move I sometimes regret. Yannick, I'd love to see the knife brand cage fight where all our favorite manufacturers do their best version of. That would be very interesting. That would have, be cool. Have okay. everyone do an Elvia and see who comes up with the best one, or yeah. or something like that. I'm trying to buy a custom knife right now, and one of them that I found was a custom Elvia. Oh, really? Yes. From Is Rich that by uh, by uh, Lala? 
uh, I don't know. I, 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 I've been uh, searching through all this stuff. I, I clipped the photo of it, so cool. I don't know. Might, might, maybe it was a G10 version, but it was like nine hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah, that must be the Rick Lala one. Yeah, probably G10 those are, though. Those are pretty cool. I like the Rick Lala. I went on his website recently when I was looking at the LV and just kind of researching it, and he's got some cool, cool tactical looking knives uh it is getting to that time where i i'm, I'm thinking i'm getting a, a little bit tired so i think i i want to draw out this knife fight um we're gonna uh, alex we're gonna be talking about single detent versus double detent uh, before we get into it do you do you have an opinion and emerson you know some of the uh, all oh, of you're the talking old... about emerson like double detent not yeah. like slip joint double detent correct mm-hmm I don't like it. <laughs> okay. All right. I mean, it's okay, but honestly, like the the I, I prefer single defense, so I do but, too. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. Yeah, that double D ten thing. I don't I, I don't think I've ever handled an Emerson knife where I actually feel like that second D ten works. Well, it's really about the feel. It's like, do you like the the smooth, slow, open roll of of like a uh, you know a Chris Reeve knife? It's kind of that difference. It's between that and being able to do, you know, this. But don't you get that click from the the frame lock, anyways? Kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get the click. It's actually it's when, with you're, the when you're close in it, mm -hmm. it's going to even show you a little bit of that smooth force, right, of that double deep end. Uh, with the single, you don't get that. You disengage there and you have no force. And, and if, yeah, right, exactly. It, 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 like, this is a single detent and it can just kind of, wait, wait, but, but don't just breeze over that. What were you just holding up? That was a crazy oh, ass. Yeah, this is a non, uh, how you say, uh, uh, this is not something for you to carry. You know, this is the stealth. Oh, okay. One of those collectors, Emerson's, that doesn't make too much sense to carry, but hey, you know, it's, it's a great, great tanto. And he has some very interesting history on it. So I made a video about it, so you should check it yeah, out. Yeah, that is a beautiful, beautiful. Well, so you guys are already on two different stances, right? Uh, I think so, yeah. So there you go. You don't even have to choose who does what. <laughs> I think so. So it's interesting to me that the that the the man with the serious Emerson collection is is going to defend something that Emerson has only been doing for like two years or three years. When did yeah. he start doing the the uh, single detent? Two thousand eighteen. Yeah. Eighteen. Okay. All right. Well, I've got years and years behind me. <laughs> now let's hear the fight, boys. Well, All right, boys. Well, best of I'm, luck I'm gonna on be the texting, fight. I'm going to be texting Spirited Whiskey on the side because he's so very good. At this. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, yeah. Alex, it's a pleasure. It was a pleasure having you, man. And, uh, um, you know, whatever be safe means to you, do that. We've got a pandemic. We've got unrest. We have a storm coming up from the, from the uh, south. Take good care of yourself, man. <laughs> I got all – don't worry, guys. I got all kinds of knives and <laughs> – Yes. You know, like, and yeah, I think I'm all right. You got the Emersons to handle all the tactical situations, right? Well, I only have two hands and I have three Emersons. <laughs> all right. Well, that's good. That's good. <laughs> it's the right ratio, right? Yeah, good average, man. I like it. All righty, sir. Have a good one. We'll talk to you next week. You got it. See you then. All right. See you. So, Mr. Edwin. Yes. Are you going to, uh, you want to start? I sure. think uh, I think you should start. So you tell me why the single detent after all of these years is now suddenly superior. So I think the double detent is trying to fix something that does not exist, you know. At the end of the day, the single detent will make the knife simple, simpler, right? In terms of construction, in terms of how to 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 use and operate that knife. If you need to center it, if you need to work on it, you're just dealing with a single detent and you don't need to worry about that other detent in that other liner uh, when you're working it with it. The other thing is that it makes the knife 
more smooth when you're closing. You don't feel the that force. Some of the things that the double detent people say that give you benefit is that the knife won't close with you on you, you know, on your fingers. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe that. I think the single detent, if you know what you're doing, it will be fine. And and the single detent will give you a better action when you're opening the knife. And again, that double detent is more complications for the users. And I don't think it's solving anything that that is needed. All right. Well, I I will agree with you on on the simplicity aspect because when you ask Ernest Emerson why he does the chisel grind, uh, he will say it's it's for simplicity of field sharpening, you know, simplicity of use. So I can see really see your argument for the single detent making things simpler. I can also see your argument for the pleasing way it opens up with the flick of a of a finger. We've all a flip of a thumb. We've all gotten used to this luxury of opening our knives um, in a way that brings us joy, and that's a nice thing. I I do like that. Um, so my defense of the double detent is twofold. One is also joy. I love the joy of slow rolling a double detent Emerson out. It's so smooth. Once you break it in, guaranteed. Yeah. You know, granted. But it just feels smooth. And then closing it, I like the same thing. I'm not worried so much about the knife closing on me. I just like the way it feels. So I will admit it's a personal taste thing. But I am also a very, very high speed, low drag kind of guy, right? And uh, I cannot tolerate any sort of play in my blades. And, uh, you know, when I'm out on missions and uh, doing ops and such, uh, I really rely, and, and, and I am not taking the piss out of anyone. I'm just taking the piss out of myself here. Uh, but, but the fact that that second detent is there really, really adds to the stability of the blade within the frame. And I could see if you were hard using these knives, which I don't personally, but if you are someone out there who is really hard using these knives, that, that, double detent system, having pressure coming in on both sides of the blade, in addition to, you know, the phosphor bronze or the nylatron washers and the, and the titanium, um, having that extra detent is feels, feels reassuring in the, in the, in the pivot area. So, uh, I would have to say that, uh, though my, my main defense is, is about feel. I like the way it feels. I would have to say for someone who's actually hard using an Emerson, the older ones with the double detent might give you more solid feel. I hear you. I hear you. I think <laughs> this is way too friendly. I don't like it. Plus, so I, sir, you are wrong. <laughs> How's that, Alex? Yeah, so I think you're full of BS. And at the end of the day, <laughs> you know, <laughs> at the end of the day, you know, you need to move forward with things like. You know, if you identify something in the architecture of your design that is not really needed, and it won't, and it won't hold or comp uh, sorry, or it won't compromise the usage of it, just get rid of it. And no one better than Ernest Emerson that's been doing this for forty years. Yeah. He knows what he's doing, and he moved forward with that. So, so yeah, that's what I think. Well, actually, I, I. I um... Now that the debate is over, I have to agree with you uh, also in that, um, yes, it is, you know, it's easy to get trapped in, well, this is how we've always done it, and so that's how we're going to do it, and and you do have to be nimble enough to, to be with the market, and um, when the double detent first was uh, concocted, it was, it, like you said, was solving a problem. It's like the F4 Phantom, the old jet from the Vietnam era. You look at that, it's got all these weird angles and stuff. And a lot of those uh, those design flourishes were actually put on to, 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 to fix bad aerodynamics, you know? Yeah, yeah. So in a way, like I, 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 you do have to evolve your thing and say, okay, now it's time to just, Re redo it. Uh, but I, ha I have to say recently, since I've gotten so many of the older ones, I love the feel. Uh, yeah. I, and, you know, it's just a debate. I love both. I don't have no. <laughs> yeah. Have no, so, you know. so Edwin's going to be putting all of his older Emersons in a big crate and sending them out to Virginia. I, Thank you, my, sir. <laughs> my seven Raven here, I can just send it to you. Oh, cool. Hey, uh, 
uh, at least a jab. Okay, a jab. Um, uh, um, uh, that Gypsy Jack you showed was. Uh, <laughs> hey. Uh, oh yeah. Well, Alec, yeah, I, I can't yeah. jab at this at this collection of beautiful Emersons, but but uh, I, I think I rested my case well. And uh, look, can you please show your sacks again? Yes, for sure. For <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sacks, right? There. Look at that. So that's what is that marbled carbon fiber? I like that kind of carbon. Yes, fiber. marble, marble carbon fiber with satin finish bolsters, right? And the black blade, right there. So your edge, just, just your edge looks straighter than mine. Is that a, a, a prototype or am I just seeing things? I know your tip is sharper than mine because I dropped this one too. I know. <laughs> But well, so no, this is not a prototype. This was an auction from mm. last year. I have a prototype that I can show you if you want. Ooh, yes, please. <laughs> Let me see if I have it here. I think your prototype doesn't have a swedge. Am I right? That's correct. No okay. swedge in the prototype, and this one does have a swedge. All right, all right, everybody. While while he digs out this knife, tell us who won. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm just curious. Love you guys, Alex. Have a go on Alex. You too. You oh, both right. failed. <laughs> That's right. He wanted he wanted a gladiatorial match. No, I'm you know. See, it's it's because uh Alex and I go way back with the knife fight. So I think maybe maybe he thinks I was being gentle, but but I really, you know, I in 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 dealing with an expert on a topic, you gotta be ginger, you know. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So what uh you were gonna show me the uh the prototype. Do you have it? I don't have it here. I was thinking this okay. was the prototype, but this is not the prototype. This is a, this is a tent of something else. So uh, before we wrap, uh, Dave Everett asked way back uh, at the beginning of the show, and I'm not sure if he's still with us, uh, and if not, I'll, I'll fill him in or maybe he'll watch later, but uh, he wanted to know how you store your collection. Now, you do have uh, a sizable collection. They're folding knives. Um, what, what type of, do you have a, a safe or, a, you know, I put, I have mine in a craftsman tool chest and so how I do you do store have, it? So I do have a safe for, for the majority of them that they go in there, just like in a, in a shoe, a standing thing inside the safe, right? Mm -hmm. They're in layers. But then I also have in the back of my door, in my uh, closet, um, I have one of these Blade HQs, 40, 40 stack, uh, I don't know how you call those, uh, folding, you know, stuff. Yeah. Put yeah, yeah. And I just have like, you know, 30 or 40 nights there hanging that I use for every day carry. I'm switching, you know, in this hobby, we're switching every day. At least I'm switching every day because, you know, how, how yeah. we are. But, but just like that, you know, it's, it's just like that. Hey, women carry knives. Hi, women. Hey, uh, uh, quick. Quick thing, uh, uh, I see women carry knives. Uh, just shut up. Uh, Edwin won because he's really convincing and confident. Don't know the value of content, but he sounded convinced. All right. I guess I'll have to. Oh, oh God, man. All right. Fine. That's fine. That's okay. really, actually, it's very cool. Women carry knives uh, made a really awful, cool gesture. And I'm going to return the gesture with something out of her wheelhouse, but I think will be very but interesting. Charles, Charles said that Blade HQ Jumbo Row. That's what I have at the back of my door. It started to, as a joke till people started loving it. I love that one. I love it. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I think it's important to keep, especially if you have a lot of stuff, keep them locked up, keep them away from the kids, but also keep them away from prying eyes, hidden in plain sight. You know, I saw Doug Markaita. They, I love him, and he was doing a, a practice video, and you I can see in the, in the background he has one of those I shelves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that. He has one of those shelves where you like move the the picture frame, and it drops down, and he's got all these beautiful knives set into. So I I wouldn't mind getting one of those too. That'd be kind of cool. For sure. All right, so Edwin, as we wrap up, uh, anything on your Emerson Horizon or on your knife? Uh, knife acquisition horizon that we should know about? Uh, there's some other Emerson coming in the train, you know, it's part of the part of the hobby. I probably will get another Elvia, given that 
the you know the final call for the second round is tomorrow mm -hmm. and, and that's it for now that's it for now but you know every other week things change really fast <laughs> hobby, so so be sure to check out uh, edwin on on instagram i mean you you post numerous pictures a day of your and, and they're beautiful pictures and you've got mm -hmm. an amazing collection you're welcome amazing collection uh uh cal o p r as you can see caliper if you will yeah, and uh just a man a killer killer collection of emerson's and uh as he says other knives too uh i don't see much evidence of that but <laughs> <laughs> i know i know others are on the way i think he's he's about to be bitten by the hinderer bug uh, yes. Maybe we'll do some sort of diplomatic exchange, uh, for sure, for sure. <laughs> but uh, also check out Callow Blades on YouTube uh, for nearly daily uploads. Every every couple of days you upload every something. Other every other day. Every other day. Um, uh, again, a uh, lot of his Emersons, but other knives as well. And uh, to me, I, I love your videos because they're digestible and uh, and you know they've got a great you know, they're, they're, they're quick and to the point. And, uh, it's funny. I like your videos for the, uh, for the opposite reason. I like, uh, Alex's for, for instance, he, he tucks in and he goes for a half hour and that's also a fun ride to go on. Um, yeah. so anyway, man, I think your videos are awesome. I love your collection. Love your pictures. Thank you so much for coming tonight and you, we hope to see you in the future. Thank you, man. Thanks. Thanks a lot. All right. Well, so, uh, for Edwin, and uh, for Jim behind the switcher, working his magic as always. Thank you, Jim. Uh, I just want to say thank you, everybody. Stay safe uh, as, as the world heats up. Stay safe and whatever that means for you. And uh, thank you all for showing up and watching. And check out that beautiful Elvia. And uh, check out Edwin. <laughs> and, uh, well, everyone, uh, thank you very much. And here it is. Don't take dull for an answer. <laughs>